Hi, my name's Chris Bond. I'm the R&D Director of Hardy Grays Limited, and I'd like to take you on a factory tour. Let's go and see rod assembly. Making a fishing rod is quite a complex process. Let's start with how we make the blank. We basically take a mandrel, which is a solid piece of bar with the right taper on it. We then use various materials, depending on what we want and how we want it, what the properties we need from the rod blank, and we wrap it around this mandrel to give us a blank. This is a blank that has been made and ovened and is now in its state ready to be painted. This is it post paint ready to be made into a rod. The same process today that makes our fishing rods also makes parts such as that, things for the military and even bigger. As you can see, uh, we use a myriad of mandrels. These are the more modern rod mandrels. Here are some of the older, larger rod mandrels. And let me take you around the corner and show you something else. You won't be able to feel this, but it's very hot here. And the reason it's hot here is because we have the ovens where we cook the mandrels and some of our larger marine mandrels. Once that blank's been cooked in the oven for some two hours, it comes out, it's stripped and it's painted. Once it's painted, it comes through into the rod shop to be made into a finished rod. To make a finished rod, we line it up and we, we, we start by putting a handle on it. The handle is made from cork shrives, which come from Portugal, from a properly managed and farmed source. We squeeze them on like that, then we profile mill it so that we get the proper handle shape that becomes known as a hardy rod. When it's had its handle put on, it then goes and gets its rings tied on in the tying shop. Let's go and have a look at that. So after the rod has spent several days in the rod shop, it comes through into the tying shop. I've got a cane blank here to show you. But basically what we take is we take the relevant rings and we put them onto the rod blank using a silk thread. These old sticks show you where the rods and the rings should be tied. It's the same process for a cane rod as it is for a carbon rod and it's tied on. Once it's tied on, we then fill it with resin, which takes again about a day or two days because we have to do it twice, and we fill in the, 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 the silk we've put on using an epoxy resin. This is where the tying is filled in. We have to add two coatings of epoxy and it takes approximately a day per coat, so it takes two days to do this. We fill in initially and then we come back a day later and top it off because what we need is the resin to impregnate the tying to make sure that it is totally homogeneous and then we put the top coat on to make it nice and clear to protect the ring and the tying. After the filling in process, the rod comes back into the tying section and into inspection where it's finished and cleaned and checked ready for dispatch. There is a difference of course between cane rods and flight carbon fly rods and I'd like to show you that now. On a carbon rod we have limited number of tyings, on a cane rod we have more tyings, but on an old-fashioned cane rod we have a significant amount of tyings. The reason for this is that the modern glue is epoxy and the old glue was bone and animal based and as such could degrade over time. In order to stop your rod falling apart, on an old cane rod, wherever there is a mark here, we would put an additional tying along its length. A very long and arduous process. And while we're talking a process, I think it would be good for you to speak to a colleague of mine, Callum, who makes the cane rods for which Hardy have become famous. Um, this is the bamboo columns as we buy them in, um, come from Tonkin in China. Um, this, this is what we start with when we're building the bamboo rod. The first stage is to select the column. Um, you want uh, obviously dense, dense pools for de depend on the, the line size of the rod that you're building. Um, you want nice clean pools for a blonde rod, blemish free, um, free from any insect marks. Um, once we've selected the poles, we'll cut them to length and one of the first steps we'll do is actually splitting the pole into sections. 
This is part of the bamboo column, um, which I'm going to split down into sections. Um, these sections create six of the sections that build up a bamboo rod. So I'm just going to demonstrate how we split these down in House of Hardy here. We basically subdivide the material um, starting from the full pole. We'll half, half the full pole and then we subdivide all the, the material down from there. Um, if you try to just split from the, the edge working around, you end up, it, it tends to run off to the skinnier side. So that's why we subdivide. So as you can see, So I've, I've split that into half, and now I'm going to split each one of them into half again, subdivide them. This is, at this point, it's, you've got to be really careful because it, it does want to run off to, to one side, so you can actually keep it on track by keeping pressure onto the side. If it's wanting to run off to my right hand, put pressure onto the left hand side and that will keep it, keep it on track. There's just a little twist at the node just to pop it through. And that's basically, that's two of the sections um, ready for node preparation. Um, and that would be the next step to, to do after the splitting. This is the node preparation. Um, I've got the section already trapped in the vise here. Um, the idea is to remove the node, uh, the leaf bud, but keeping intact as much of the, as the section as you can. So we want to keep this, this down to a minimum. So we're just going to file, file that bud away just until we, we get it down to the... And then we're just going to use a scraper just to blend this away into the section. And that's, that's pretty much well it, and you, you repeat this uh, process on every node, except, except the nodes that is actually going to be uh, cut off, so you, would, you wouldn't touch their nodes. Now this is the Hardy's bamboo mill. Um, this is a machine, this is a section that's actually been filed. So the next stage would be to machine the taper. And this is one of the strips that's actually had the taper machined. Um, so there'd be six of these that would make up a, a finished uh, butter tip section. And from there, it'll go uh, to gluing, and that's the next step after machining. And just as a point of interest, this, this trolley here, um, it's been around a long time. This probably dates back to the um, original Hardy factory, uh, Barngate Without, um, so it's pretty old. Um, as you can see, it's full of uh, sections that have already been through the mill, um, and these are currently waiting to be glued up. Um, as you can see, We've got lots of different sizes here, all ready, all ready to be glued up as the neck for the next stage. As you can see, I've got some uh, examples of a finished section here. Um, these has been through the gluing process and they've had the strings removed. Um, this probably represents about uh, a week's worth of work. So from now on, these can be uh, sent down the line and finished off into a completed cane rod. As you can see here, we've got a finished example of a bamboo rod. Um, it's already had the guides whipped on, as Chris spoke about earlier. Um, the hand inscription's been put on. Um, Tiger Mabel Real Seat and Hardware's been mounted. Um, you'll probably be surprised to know that we're only making approximately six of these bamboo rods a month. Um, but they are a work of art. <laughs>